Hey everyone, welcome. If you saw my last video, I went over the four phases of pickleball movement. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out because it's gonna be a great intro for what we're gonna learn in this next video coming up here. One of those four phases in the movement pattern is to improve your positioning. So in this video, we're gonna dive into the specifics of how we're gonna improve our positioning. Positioning can be a pretty tricky thing with a lot of information to cover. So I'm gonna to try to break this down in the most logical way possible. So we're gonna to have to do this over the course of a couple different videos. So in this first video, we're gonna look at the top of the positional pyramid, which is just gonna go over general positioning concepts. These are really important to fully understand because they drive every positional decision that we make. In the next video, we'll be discussing my five rules for positioning, which are based on those concepts. And then at the bottom of the pyramid, we've got some common situations that I see positional mistakes happen in a lot. And we'll be going over a bunch of these in some future videos. Okay, so let's dive right in. There's two main factors at the kind of the top of the pyramid that basically drive almost all of our decision making on where we should be in the court. The first one is understanding that the closer you are to the person who's hitting the ball, the more you cut off potential options for them. You cut off angles in the court, you take away space for them to work with, and ultimately those equal to applying more pressure to your opponents. So I'm illustrating this in the graphic that you're looking at. Here you've got player C and player B. Player C is the hitting person, and those five lines basically represent potential shots that he could be hitting into this half court. The red lines are ones that player B cannot reach, and the yellow is what he can reach. So as you can see, as we play this forward, as player B gets closer to player C, he cuts off more of player C's shot options and can reach basically all of player C's potential shots. So next we have the same thing illustrated in more of a doubles formation. As we watch this through, I wanna make one really important point to this. We're only gonna take away space behind good shots. So that means if the shot that you hit is low and unattackable, then you're gonna follow that up by trying to take away the space between yourself and the hitter and apply more pressure. So now let's take a look at this concept at work in a live point. We're gonna be paying attention to Dylan Frazier and JW Johnson who are in the near court. As Dylan hits his third shot drop, what you're gonna see is JW releases forward to start applying pressure. Once they both realize that Dylan has hit a drop that's gonna be good, it's gonna be low and unattackable to Riley, they both collapse on the ball, they both rush right to that spot and try to apply pressure onto Riley's next shot. So now the second major part at the top of this pyramid is basically the exact opposite. When we're in trouble or when we hit a ball high or we're on defense, moving further away from the hitting opponent creates more reaction time and can help in getting you out of trouble. So as we go back to the same clip now, we're gonna see JW gets a bit jammed up on a volley. He's gonna pop the ball up and him and Dylan both take a couple quick steps back to gain some reaction time because they know that ball is gonna be coming hard at their feet. And you can see right away, they're right back at it. JW realizes Dylan hit a pretty good defensive shot. So he starts taking space away. Dylan doesn't have much time. He plays one more ball defensively, realizes that one's good, and now he's back taking space away. So they're able to back up, defend, neutralize, and then get back up to the kitchen line. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at one more point, and I'm gonna walk you through how the players are using these concepts to make their decisions. For this one, we're gonna focus on Matt and Riley, who are in the near court here. You can see Matt decides to hit a third shot drive, leaves it a little bit high, and now both him and Riley decide that they haven't hit a shot that they really like yet. So they're deciding at this point to stay neutral rather than take away space. You can see Matt starts to release here, realizes up oh, that's a little high, he kind of takes another step back, doesn't really commit, and they're still just feeling out these shots and staying fairly neutral in the back of the court. At this point, what they're looking for is a ball that JW or Dylan are gonna have to take below net height, which they still haven't gotten yet. So now finally, after about four or five of these, Riley hits one here that he likes. They both see that it's gonna bounce, and you can see right away, 
both Matt and Riley are quick to take that space away, get up to the net, and eventually they end up winning this point after four or five good defensive shots. So hopefully this video helped in laying some of the foundation for how we decide where we're going to go positioning wise. Please let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments below and look out for that next video I have coming out on my five rules for positioning. See you next time.